What's up, everybody? We are back. John De La Rose here, the leading Hispanic voice in science fiction with another epic collection review. I should start calling these quarantine reviews because I'm reading so much on quarantine. Yeah, it's pretty great. I'm actually loving it. <laughs> are you guys enjoying it? Are you guys enjoying the whole quarantine thing? Because uh, uh, not, not seeing people and just reading more books uh, is uh, kind of my dream. So here we go. By the way, hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, you know, help grow the channel and all that. Okay, so this is Silver Surfer Epic Collection number 13, Inner Demons, by J.M. De Mateus. Tom DeFalco scripts a couple of Mateus' storylines in here. We got, uh, I think it's Garney's first name. What's his first name? Ron Garney, I should remember that. Uh, we got Val Simic, uh, Carrie Nord, and some others in here. It's, it's mostly Ron Garney. Then you get a splash of Carrie Nord in there for the most part. Um, this takes place between 1996 and 1998. Silver Surfer 123 through 138. The minus one, uh, which Marvel had this minus one event where you go back prior to the number one issue to prior to where things have started. And, and most of them are pretty bad one-offs, uh, but this one's a little different. I'll get to it. And the uh, annual 97. This takes place uh, right after Onslaught and, uh, and then eventually gets into Hero's Return a little bit. And since Silver Surfer is impacted by the Fantastic Four, it does impact things a little bit. The volume has a bit of a slow start. Um, and we've got uh, uh, issue 132 here. It's dedicated to Mark Grunewald. I don't know why exactly at this point. Um, probably should have looked that up, uh, but uh, that's, that's what he did. And basically, Silver Surfer returns to Earth in this issue. He's like a, he's almost like a, a Spock character at this point where he's got no emotions. He's just driven by logic and all that. And he's kind of forgotten who he was. Something happened with his soul. And he is uh, trying to figure out what happened and, and, and how to uh, kind of recover himself. Uh, and I believe this is, who's up? is this Ron Garney's art? I think it is. I think it is through almost all this volume. I don't see the page where it gives the credits. Um, but very good comic style art. Um, I actually find this some of the better stuff out of the 90s that I've read so far. And he eventually gets in with Alicia Masters. And there's this other lady, and I can't remember her name for the life of me. Uh, but you'll find out what her, she's about later. There's this, this group kind of observing him, and uh, it builds very masterfully through the issues as, as the, you know, it does the single story per issue, but it also builds this overall plot, which like compounds. And even though the first few issues are a bit slow, as I said, and it gets a, a tad repetitive. Um, we have that one, we have uh, him uh, going to Atlantis and he kind of goes through his old defenders pals and just like tries to meet with them real quick and has to fight villains in the middle of it. Um, and tries to remember who he is. And so he starts with uh, trying to find Namor, but Namor's gone on uh, Hero's Return. And uh, then we're back and another issue later, we start with these jets trying to hunt him down just like he had before, which is where, where I said it gets repetitive. And uh, he fights the Hulk in this issue. I don't like the way that uh, Garney draws the Hulk so much. Uh, it's just kind of awkward to me, but uh, I do like the way he draws the Silver Surfer. So it, it balances out. Very thick lines, as you can see, but very clean. Uh, this is like the beginning of digital coloring in comics. And you can see that like just, you know, it's not as smooth as they are these days with the digital colorings, uh, but uh, you know, it works out pretty well for comics. I actually enjoyed this. I like the bright colors that we're using here. Then he meets Stephen Strange. We get into the annual, which takes a break from the main storyline. Um, and are we in the annual? Do, do, do. I think we're in the end already. Um, and uh, he, he meets this girl who's like, um, and uh, reunites her with her mother, even though she's, you know, created some sins, he decides to deal with that. Um, so here we go, Stephen Strange, we get a strange uh, deal. Oh, we're not in the annual yet, I'm sorry. That was just a backup story. All right, here's the annual. Uh, we, we, he meets with Stephen Strange, he ends up at this weird, uh, oops, and what happens at the end of this? He ends up uh, kind of connecting to Alicia Masters after Strange removes some of the blocks from his mind. 
All right, like I said, it's a very slow start up until this point. Uh, there's not a ton that happens. There's a couple fights, but like, there's nothing that feels oppressive or like anybody's in real danger at this point. It's just a real slow roll. And that's fine um, because it actually pays off really well. He sets up this beautiful, beautiful overarching storyline, which pays off nicely. And I like uh, Garni's art through it for the most part. It's very simple, but it works. So Val Simics does this um, annual and I actually like his art a little bit better. It's a little more classic traditional comic style. And he meets this guy called Scryer. What's interesting to me is uh, DeFalco and J.M. J. Mateus had the Scryers in um, Amazing Spider-Man like two years prior to this. And it's a completely different concept, but they use the same word for the guy. And he's like this godlike being that Silver Surfer has to fight. The colors are a little crisper and more standard comic-y uh, in the annual here. And uh, eventually the guy requires Silver Surfer to sacrifice this child. Silver Surfer says no, and he's like, you failed me, you can't actually be my minion. And that's that for the annual. And we get back into, it seems like a one-off and it's a very good one-off and it, and it ends up being actually very important to the later story, which I like because most annual issues um, end up not mattering to the overall story of what's going on, but this one actually matters. So, I mean, they really weaved a great story in that. Tom DeFalco did the scripting, which I, is always wonderful. Um, and that was uh, Jam Day Mateus again on the writing. And we get back to the storyline where Silver Surfer's kind of just hanging out with Alicia Masters. He's uncovering, uh, we meet the Puppet Master and he makes a clone of himself and he imbibes it with cosmic energy. And this clone of himself, uh, this puppet clay, fights him, kicks his butt. He's actually an angry, evil Silver Surfer. And then he ends up fighting with Daredevil and Spider-Man. And uh, this is right after all their 90s shenanigans where they were Ben Riley for a bit and he was in his armored costume for a bit, but they're back to normal now both of which J.M. Demoteus had uh, a part of. So it's very interesting to see all these worlds collide uh, if you've read all three of their storylines up until this point, which I have. And then they uh, have a huge fight and the real Silver Surfer ends up having to go back to 1947 where he's trapped and they end up in there and he has to revisit them, some things from the past. And uh, we have Alicia Masters also trapped in 1947. Now, Silver Surfer leaves Alicia Masters, goes and talks with Galactus, finds out there's some threat going on, and then we get to this minus one issue. Now, I talk about how the minus one issues often aren't that good. Peter Parker has one where he's like a kid, and Daredevil has one where he's um, back in college and it's not that useful. But um, and this one actually ties right into the story because it just takes place right after that. And these aliens kidnap a lady who end up uh, part of what's going on before and they kidnap Stan Lee also <laughs> who's a part of this and he's like wow this is a wild story far out man it's pretty funny um this so this is the best minus one issue I've read so far um and that lady keeps talking about the silver surfer and, and her family thinks she's crazy and all that uh, as it builds up through the overarching plot through this and then they come back it turns out these aliens are a force that's going to destroy everybody um and uh Galactus sends silver surfer back and we learn who that lady at the beginning of the issue is. There's just like Colt who's like following Silver Surfer around. And all the art stays mostly the same. Uh, so that's why I'm not talking about it too much. It's all good stuff. And I, I really enjoy the comic-y style art here that Ron Garney does. And this Colt wants Silver Surfer as a, a leader. And they uh, try to co-opt him. They co-opt the Puppet Master to like make their own thing. And Silver Surfer has to fight both the alien threat and them as they come together. We get this, uh, we get a boring storyline that kind of stops things where we're in the Puppet Master's mind uh, and he has to fight for his survival. I hate, I hate stories like this. Um, and so <laughs> um, I really skimmed over that pretty good. And as you see, there's not much background here that, um, and there's not much for the art to really like carry the story too much either. It's just kind of boring. Um, and we get back into the main story again. All right, here we go. And at this point, uh, Silver Surfer meets the lady who was kidnapped. Uh, the the uh, uh, evil cult shows up. Silver Surfer um, looks like he dies. The Scryer shows up and he brings uh, Silver Surfer into another mind, like having to fight for his survival, where he actually has to fight Mephisto, so it's a little more interesting than that one. 
Mephisto shows up. And Mephisto's a big Silver Surfer character. He sh he's in the beginning of the series a lot. Um, and so uh, it's nice to have him kind of show up here. And the Scryer ends up, uh, you know, they, they fight the aliens back. Silver Surfer comes back to life. Yay. And uh, the Scryer uh, ends up leaving. Um, but yeah, here's the aliens. It, it turns out all the aliens are one consciousness mind. Really good sci-fi stuff. Uh, I, the storyline is so good in here. Um, and the art is just really wonderful comic art. Love it all the way around. Most 90s stuff is really not to my taste. Um, and this works out really well. And they end it and they, they, they you know, call off both the threats. And then we get one one-off issue here with Roger Cruz on pencils and uh, J.M.D. Mateus writing. And this is... Uh, ben Grimm's come back for Imperial Roots Were Born, which is obviously a problem because, you know, Silver Surfer is now kind of romantic with Alicia Masters, and Ben Grimm uh, has to uh, sort of come to terms with that. He bows out gracefully. Uh, they have a little bit of a fight anyway, um, of course, because that's what you do in comic books. And uh, then they end up teaming up, of course and uh, Alicia Masters and Silver Surfer live happily ever after. I guess if you don't read the next. So that's it. Um, so there's this beautiful arc throughout this whole thing. It is a complete story, which is always nice. Uh, you can read it from start to finish because he comes back to Earth if you know who the Silver Surfer is remotely. And it's all taking place on Earth rather than the cosmic, except for that whole alien thing, which kind of takes place on Earth. And uh, just beautifully done. Love this whole storyline. Everything about it just gelled. Like I said, slow start at the beginning. There's a couple issues in there with like the whole, you know, uh, inside the mind and fighting for the will to live, which is really obnoxious. Um, but barring those, uh, this is about a, as perfect a collection as it gets. I, I blew through this in one day because it was just so uh, well done with those like hooks for the next issue. Uh, just building the story along. Uh, the art's really nice. I, I like the, you know, just standard comic style. Digital coloring in this era is, a you know, I mean, it's a little on the rough side, but it's okay. Um, it's just very overly clean is what it ends up being. But it's bright and it's nice um, and enjoyable. Uh, so everything about this was pretty darn good. Uh, this was one of the better epic collections I've read. I don't think it's my favorite Silver Surfer volume so far. I think volume three still takes the cake on that, which is his original uh, beginning of his series. Um, but it is a, a really fun arc. Um, and it's standalone. Now, Silver Surfer Volume um, 1, or I guess it's Volume 3, I'm sorry. Volume 1 was from the 60s. Uh, volume 3 is this whole, like, it's got 146 issues, I think. So there's like nine issues left of Silver Surfer uh, in Volume 1. So I don't know what comes after this. Uh, there's probably going to be a Volume 14 to just close it out. Um, there's probably a mini series or something that ties in with it also. Um, but uh, this is a, a really good 90s offering. I'm surprised because uh, I had skipped over the Silver Surfer when I was a kid, but this is uh, just really good comics right here. Um, other than the slow start and those points, got to gotta dock a couple points to it because of that. I got to give this an 8.5 out of 10, which is on my higher scale. I'm, I'm pretty pretty solid about giving things averages usually, if you guys uh, notice. I, I tend to put things at seven, and if it's eight, I really like it. If it's nine, I really, really like it. And if it's 10, it's, it's a downright perfect comic story. So it's it's getting pretty close um, on my scale. 8.5, definitely worth the read and enjoyable. Hit the like and subscribe button, everybody. Let me know if you've read this uh, or if you're interested in other things for me to read or whatnot. Uh, happy to hear from you, and I will be back next time. See you.